Wednesday, January 12th. Looking at a rather quiet day for much of the country, let's take a look at that surface map. The dominant feature is really this Great Basin High, located over Idaho and the Salt Lake City area. Pressures looks like about 1032 millibars in that, and that's due to a lot of cold air being trapped in the valleys and low-lying areas. And it's very hard to displace that during the winter when you have this rather stagnant flow. Also, we have this weak Alberta clipper coming southeast out of the Dakotas into the Midwest. Not very much weather with that. Looks like a dry system. And then further up in the northeast, a cool westerly flow, but looks like a reinforcing shot of cold air coming in from Quebec. And... Quiet on the west coast, we do have some fog, the Thule fog in the southern San Joaquin Valley around Bakersfield. But up north, just north of Seattle, we have this strong bear clinic system. Looks like a warm one. You can see a lot of rain with that. In fact, let me drag that up a little bit. And you can see that rain extending well inland into British Columbia. Most of the snow showers are up in the mountains. Let's set our sights on the Pacific and move out west, check things out. And we just have this one little occlusion off the Washington coast, moving inland. And let's go up to Alaska. Continued cold in that region. However, it has moderated quite a bit. We had minus 30s, minus 40s several days ago, and we've come up to pretty much right around zero. And even in the southern part of Alaska, coming up near freezing in a lot of areas. But this looks like a fresh incursion of cold air coming in from Siberia and the Chukchi Sea coming inland and bringing some cooler conditions to the state. And then going out into Canada, pretty quiet. One little polar high across Northwest Territories and around uh, Yellowknife. That's a blob of cold air that's working its way south and kind of reinforcing this front. However, you can see the effects of isentropic lift and overrunning. We've had this situation the past several days with the westerly flow coming on top of this cold dome and producing snow and clouds for many days from Winnipeg all the way up towards Saskatoon. But out there in Alberta and southern Saskatchewan, temperatures coming up into the 20s. In the foothills, much warmer, 48 degrees there at Calgary and 43 at Cut Bank. And then a quick look out in the Atlantic because we are the only weather cast that looks at Greenland. Looks like a quiet day in that area. Some snow showers up there in Reykjavik with cold westerly flow. But other than that, just some snow showers out there around Labrador and some snow extending from Labrador into Nova Scotia. And now it's time to take a look at those air masses. And really, one of the best charts to use is the 850 millibar analysis. This is up at about 5,000 feet. And what we see here is a good chunk of cold air across the Hudson Bay region. Let's put that into motion. We bring the maps forward. The cold air moves into the northeastern U.S. So Maine, New England, New York, going to get some of that cold air. But look out west. We've got an Alberta clipper coming together. That's it right there. And that's going to funnel some of the cold air westward. This is on Friday. And then going into Saturday and Sunday, cold air moves into the Great Plains and into Texas and Louisiana. Temperatures down around minus 10 at 850 millibars, which is fairly cold. There's that air mass coming south into the Great Plains region. Meanwhile, developing a strong cyclone around Memphis. Pretty potent system coming together in the southeastern U.S. Moving up the northeast coast probably is a nor'easter. This is around Sunday and Monday. Round three, 
That's it coming into Montana for Wednesday and into the rest of the plains for Thursday and Friday. Not much southward movement on that. Then here comes another chunk of cold air next weekend, around the 22nd, 23rd. So this pretty clearly paints out that we're looking at cold in the eastern half of the U.S. and mild in the western United States. Let's take a look at those watches, warnings, and advisories. Not very much going on. We do have a winter storm watch for the Dakotas into Iowa for that next system coming through there on Friday. Other than that, some wind warnings in the high plains. A flood watch for the western parts of Washington and in northern New York and Vermont, a winter weather advisory. And this is a great time to look at the dynamics. This is what we have this afternoon, the 500 millibar heights and vorticity, a ridge from Arizona up to British Columbia. And since the ridge is often co-located with warm air, no wonder the precipitation in British Columbia is on the warm side, rain. And then in the eastern U.S., we have broad troughing. You can see maybe a little bit of a definition of some sort of short wave moving through the flow, producing some snow through Wisconsin into the Great Lakes. And then we have a channel jet signature right here, the high vorticity on the left side and the lower vorticity on the right side, and that outlines the presence of a jet max right in that region. Usually with this kind of pattern, the upper level lift is going to be roughly in that area. So we could see that supporting some snow showers across the western Great Lakes. Then we get into the Thursday and Friday time period. And there you go. We're going to be seeing a couple of strong troughs in the northwestern U.S. digging south. And these will help produce some of that snow that we're expecting in the Dakotas into Iowa. And that could extend later into Missouri and Tennessee. And that's quite a potent trough. The upper level low, located over Oklahoma, stacking back towards the colder air coming south through the Great Plains. Now, this is embedded in the prevailing westerlies, which are running something like that. Not a whole lot of long wave troughing. Most of that's off in the eastern U.S. So this is definitely a compact system. And following in its wake, some very strong ridging. So it could be a very rapid warm-up once this is gone. That comes up to the 84-hour point, so I'm not going to go too much further than that. We'll look at that on Friday. However, yeah, a lot of action in the south-central U.S., Arkansas, Memphis, Shreveport, getting some strong upper-level lift, and that will head northeast into the northeastern U.S. and nor'easter. So we'll be looking at that for about Sunday or Monday. All right. And yeah, this is a little cut off low off the coast of California. So that's another wild card that we will be dealing with. Let's look at the surface fields, put everything together. So now we know that we don't have any large upper air support. We've got that strong trough coming through around Friday or Saturday. That's going to be the big weather maker. But other than that, we're going to be embedded in this broad scale ridge centered on the west coast. So let's look for that Alberta Clipper. That's it right there early on Friday. About to head south, there's that Bear Clinic precip area. And the whole thing moves south. This is going to be later on Friday into Saturday about midnight. <clears throat> Then the whole thing moves into Arkansas, Louisiana, Texas. Strong cold air advection in its wake right there. And the warm air advection area located right there. And that's co-located with the precip. And looks like, according to the NAM for Saturday, the rain-snow line is going to be up there in the Boston Mountains, the Ozarks. And then down in Memphis looks initially to be rain, but possibly changing over to snow there by late Saturday. Now, of course, when we have these strong troughs with 
potent upper level energy, we have to be concerned with moisture. Because the southeastern states, they tend to get most of their severe weather in January and February. And what we see here for late Saturday, we're not bringing up very high dew points. We've just not really had much time to bring rich Gulf moisture northward. So we're seeing dew points inland around 50 to 55, which is not really great for severe weather. Let's look at those sounding profiles in southern Alabama. And what we see here, well, that's going to be a front on version with cold air down below it. So the warm front probably just to the south there and probably a lot of the moisture, the convection will be in the form of elevated embedded storms. So I'm not sure that that warm sector has made it all the way up into Alabama. And we can see that the column is conditionally unstable, not much of a lapse rate. So yeah, you can see the capes there, not very impressive. However, ample shear. Yeah, that's definitely enough for tornadic activity. The problem is we just don't really have the steam for convection. And we also need to work our way down the moisture axis closer to the coast because it looks like the dew points there are in the 60s. So we'll pull up a sounding right there around Biloxi Gulfport. We've eliminated that frontal inversion. The lapse rate's still not very great. They've come up a little bit. And then further out to sea, we get into the warm sector itself. The capes even a little bit higher, and the probabilistic hazards going for marginal severe. The Pacific continuing to be quite active, a cutoff flow down here south of California, and a couple of bear clinic systems lined up out into the Pacific. The strongest one, well offshore north of Hawaii. Let's look at the IVT situation. And there it is. You can see the atmospheric river set up a short one off the northwest coast of the U.S. There's that one south of California and then three lined up out into the Pacific itself. Let's check out the GFS sequence and we'll see that first one slam into the Seattle area this evening. The next one heading mostly for British Columbia in a couple days there. Then for Friday into Saturday, into Sunday, that one heads into British Columbia. And I didn't really see much for California. Let me run that back. Yeah, that's that cutoff low right there. Not really driving much moisture. Uh, looks like maybe 300 to 400 IVT into the Los Angeles area, but it rapidly tapers out. Then going into the long term, we're not done with those... Pacific systems. That looks like quite a beefy low there south of the Aleutians. That's going to be around the 20th of January. And that's definitely tapping into the tropics. There's Hawaii. So that's going to bring quite a bit of warmth and moisture into the northeastern Pacific Basin. And in closing, let's take a look at the mid-tropospheric height anomalies. Basically, your reds are going to be ridging aloft, usually corresponding to warm air in the lower troposphere. And it's the opposite for the blue. It's troughing aloft and cold air in the low levels. Now, what I want you to look at here is the average, the aerial average. You can see that this is all kind of reddish. And I'm going to run this forward about a week. And you can see that red just kind of persists on the West Coast. And even going into the one and a half to two week period, we hang on to that ridging out West. Okay, now I'm going to run it back. Look at the blue again. You can see the troughing on the East Coast and running it about a week in, into the future. A definite tendency towards troughing, especially in the Hudson Bay region. So we do have our polar vortexes. I mean, that's it right there. The problem is it's not coming very far south. So 
also, yeah, look at that blocking out there in the Atlantic. That really gets going about, uh, let's see, about one week from now. And it kind of stays locked up out there. And that means all the systems upstream will have a hard time changing their wave configuration. So we'll probably be stuck in this pattern for maybe a good two weeks at least. So we'll see how it goes. And that's all for this edition of Forecast Lab. I did get one comment from Austin Haig. He said, begging for rain here in Arizona, La Nina is not kind to us in the winter. Well, we will hope for a pattern change. I know we could use one. We'll see everybody back here for the Friday edition. Take care and have a great rest of your week. Bye-bye.